What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we have our very first episode of a series I'm calling Commentator Callout, where we take a look at political commentators from the left and the right and call them out for being completely dishonest and being partisan hacks. And today in the first episode we have this gem right here. But if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. And the myth of things um, like the Southern switch and the Southern strategy, which never happened. Because they are filthy, disgusting liars. And I'm sorry that I am so angry right now, but what I just saw was astonishing. Yep, we're going to be breaking down all the partisan hackery of one Candace Owens. Today on... So if you're not familiar with Candace Owens, she's a conservative commentator who blew up mostly in 2018 and then became part of Turning Point USA, a conservative group. She's also the founder of the Blexit movement, which is the black exit from a Democratic Party. Her most recent claim to fame is an 18-minute video telling us about why we shouldn't care about George Floyd and how he's not a martyr. And there's one other thing you should know about Candace Owens. Uh, she... she she, she, oh yeah, she's completely full of shit. Now, I know your first instinct might be to say, Tim, you're just a shill lefty who doesn't like it when a conservative tells it like it is. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Left or right, I have a problem with grifters. And as you'll see throughout this series, I'll be calling out plenty of lefty commentators. But without further ado, let's break down why Candace Owens is the queen of grift and should not and cannot be taken seriously. Before we get to the countless bad takes and conspiracy theories she throws out there with absolutely no evidence, we have to go over the fact that three years ago, not only was she not a conservative, but she was a total liberal SJW. In 2015, Candace founded a lifestyle and politics site that was very, very anti-Trump. They wrote articles like, does Donald Trump have a small penis? They included, yes, by the way, he does have a small penis. Candace herself wrote about the Republican Tea Party saying, Good news! They will eventually die off peacefully in their sleep, we hope. Then we can get right on with the obvious social changes that need to happen immediately. So this person had such strong political beliefs that they tried to make a career out of it, and within a year they have totally switched sides. And honestly, I might be willing to believe that. But the story around how Candace switched sides is the most unbelievable story ever told, a.k.a. a grift. While still running Degree 180, Candace put up a Kickstarter for a site called Social Autopsy. What is Social Autopsy, you might ask? Well, it's a website that documents hate speech, a thing Candace no longer thinks exists. Basically, what it would do is take everything bad you've ever said and put it on one place on the internet for everyone to see. It even included the information of underage children. And the collective internet lost its damn mind because obviously this could lead to doxing. Now everyone from InfoWars and Breitbart on the right, all the way to the Young Turks on the left did articles explaining why this was a bad idea. Not to mention a million different YouTubers did the same thing, especially conservative ones. But even though clearly both sides thought this was a terrible idea, honestly this might be the last thing the internet agreed on. According to Candace, the reason she opened her eyes to conservatism is that liberal media outlets lied about her website and then a bunch of liberals posed as right-wing trolls online and harassed her. Getting like inundated with emails that say like Bob at Trump45.com and they're like right. die and we're die. Like if you go through it, like we're going to kill, like just like the most, like I was like, well, this is kind of perfect, right? Like, like smoking. I don't so know. you think that someone orchestrated this attack I, on 100%. you and it was fake Trump supporters that were going after you it wasn't real? Trump, yeah, that, that was my, like, I was like, oh, I said it. All of a sudden the New York Magazine and the Washington Post tried to smear me. Instantly. Instantly. And at that time, I thought... Is it thought, possible that you're wrong? No. It's, it's, it's not. It's, it's implausible. Weird thing. Like, my whole life just went... Phew. Like, I was like, okay... So one interaction, that's all it took. It's, yeah, and, and a subsequent firestorm. Now, is there ever been any proof at all that no. she's done what you think she did? Just Nobody smeared you. Literally everyone just told the truth about the terrible idea for a website you had. She wants you to believe that a girl named Zoe Quinn, who was harassed and bullied herself during the Gamergate scandal, orchestrated a campaign to harass Candace, a claim she has absolutely no evidence for. So I want you to sit back and think about this. What sounds more plausible? That a bunch of right-wing trolls went and harassed Candace and her project after all their favorite content creators and news sites said what a terrible idea social autopsy was? 
Or you have to believe that a girl who was also bullied and harassed online had a bunch of people pose as Trump supporters and go after Candace, a claim she has absolutely no evidence for. Because we all know that right-wing trolls love it when a self-described liberal at the time threatens to take away their anonymity online. Yeah, that's gonna go over well. So, in order to buy what Candace is selling, you have to believe that some people were mean to her online, so she changed all her opinions on healthcare, the economy, the environment, immigration, trans rights, and overall social issues, especially race relations. So after both her SJW projects failed, Candace didn't immediately become a conservative. She went away for several months, and then in late 2017, she popped back up with a very low-budget YouTube channel. I only bring that up because I think it's pretty clear what happened here. After completely failing in the world of online woke SJW culture, she sat back for a couple months, surveyed the political landscape, pulled out her phone, created this conservative character, and started picking at all the low-hanging fruit in an attempt to go viral. And it worked like a charm. Not long after Candace started gaining some steam on YouTube, she was hired as Director of Urban Engagement at TPUSA. This came shortly after they got in some hot water when one of their team leaders sent out this text to a member of the team. Yeah, I'll let you read that. Needless to say, they were looking to do some damage control, so they hired Candace. Not too long after that, Kanye tweeted out, I love the way Candace Owens thinks, and her stock shot way up, and she's been doing everything she can to stay relevant ever since. So I think it's pretty clear that she's playing a character in order to secure the bag. Even a lot of online conservatives called her out during this time because this whole thing was clearly a grift. Links in the description. Check it out. Definitely worth a look. But while it's bad enough that Candace Owens is playing a fake character, and for that alone you shouldn't take her seriously, the biggest problem with what Candace is doing is that she uses her platform to spread fake history, push crazy conspiracies, and do straight-up propaganda for companies like Geo Group, which is the world's largest private prison owner. So, let's go through some of her hot takes, and hopefully by the end you'll see that she's really nothing more than a glorified Twitter troll. We'll save this disgusting attempt for views till the end. Let's get into it. I happen to fall into the window of people that knows my history. I'm a black American, and I know that the NRA was started as a civil rights organization, um, training black Americans to arm themselves and defend themselves against the KKK. So it's incredulous to me that they stand on that platform. I've never heard that before. That's so interesting. It is. It's incredibly interesting. And it's yeah, that is interesting, especially seen as it's complete garbage. If that's why the NRA was founded, then somebody needs to tell the NRA. Because here's the statement on their website on how they were founded. And literally nothing she says in that whole clip was mentioned. Not black people, not the KKK, none of that stuff. PolitiFact gave a similar claim to the one Candace is making here, Pants on Fire, back in 2014. That's because the NRA was founded by a union general in 1871 who wanted to take a more scientific approach to how they do rifle shooting. I happen to fall into the window of people that knows my history. I'm on top of the fact that according to the NRA itself this isn't true, as you will find with basically everything we fact check Candace on, pretty much the exact opposite is true. According to law professor Adam Winkler, the NRA played a role in keeping guns out of the hands of black people in the 1960s after the Black Panthers protested with guns at the state capitol. The NRA supported the Mulford Act, which is one of the reasons California has such strict gun laws. And when legal gun owner Fernando Castile was murdered by a cop at a routine traffic stop because he calmly told the officer he had a gun on him, the NRA said they wouldn't defend him because he had weed on him, even though that had nothing to do with his death. If you notice the date of Candace talking there, it was March 4th, 2018, which is shortly after the shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. And needless to say, the NRA was in definite need of a PR boost. And they don't give $30 million to the Trump campaign for nothing. Props to Fox News for the propaganda headline of the year there, by the way. Can't say they aren't good at what they do. Candace tries to play the role of educated truth teller who says it like it is. But what she actually is is an agenda pusher for the conservative elite, similar to PragerU or TPUSA. But we'll get to that more in a minute. Let's get to our next claim history and the myth of things um, like the southern switch and the southern strategy which never happened boy for somebody who claims to know about history you sure skip a couple chapters if you're not aware the 
Southern strategy is a tactic used by Republicans after the Civil Rights Act was passed to get the vote of racist white people. And it was also when the Dixiecrat wing of the Democratic Party switched sides and joined the Republicans. This is well documented history. The Republican Party literally apologized for the Southern strategy in 2005. So if it never happened, it seems kind of strange they would do that. Now I could show you a million things to prove that she's lying, other than the fact that they literally apologized for it. Like this quote from former Nixon advisor Kevin Phillips explaining the Southern strategy and how it worked. Or this memo from former Nixon advisor and current sitting Republican Senator Lamar Alexander. I happen to fall into the window of people that knows my history. But I think this quote talking about the Southern strategy from Lee Atwater, who's been called one of the most important Republican strategists of the 70s and 80s, really sums it up. Quote, you start out in 1954 by saying N-word, N-word, N-word. And by 1968, you can't say N-word. That hurts you. Backfires. So you say stuff like uh, forced busing, states' rights, and all that stuff. And now you're getting so abstract. Now you're talking about cutting taxes and all these things you're talking about are totally economic things. And a byproduct of them is blacks get hurt worse than whites. We want to cut this. It's much more abstract than even the busing thing, uh, and a lot more abstract than N-word, N-word. If you need any more proof the Southern strategy happened, links will be down below. I'll also leave a couple links proving the Earth isn't flat, just, just in case. It was Obama, and Obama did a lot to tear this country apart. I do not remember when I was growing up having all of these race issues, okay? I really don't remember it. And then suddenly, towards the end of Obama, we started hearing all of this rhetoric drummed up. It became white versus black all over again. And I say all over again, I shouldn't even say that, because when I was alive, this was not an issue. This is the griftiest grift that ever grifted. She's, oh, I don't remember all these race issues when I was growing up. Not, not till Obama got in office did did we have all these racial problems? Except she left out the fact that she herself was the victim of a hate crime in the before time, 2007. The mayor's son in the town she lived in and his friends left her a bunch of extremely racist voice messages. And she won a lawsuit thanks to the help of the NAACP, $40,000. Also, before Candace got turned into a conservative propaganda machine, she wrote a ton about how this event had a long-term negative effect on her life. She struggled with anorexia for five years. She knows firsthand how a traumatic event can have a long-term effect on your life. But more on that later. I was able to get access to go into an actual, an actual immigration center. I'm with an entire film crew, so I'm about to blow up this narrative in a way that the left is not expecting because they are filthy, disgusting liars. And I'm sorry that I am so angry right now, but what I just saw was astonishing, okay? This place is nicer than where I went to the public school system. There's a nursing station that is so clean and so nice. Where they dine, they're sitting down laughing, eating food, and I will be posting and doing a documentary on what is actually happening. Now we get to the part where we get to see who Candace is doing all this grifting for. We all remember the kids in cages issue back in 2018. Well, a company that runs a lot of those facilities is a company named Geo Group. They also run a lot of private prisons. At the time, it looked like Candace was exposing the leftist lies. But let's dig into it a bit further, shall we? An investigation by Sludge uncovered tax documents showing that Geo Group, who owns the facility she's at, gave Turning Point USA $50,000 in 2018. According to the documents, right before the second donation of the year, Candace does this video explaining how she gained access to the facility. Oh, 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 you mean you gained access to the place you're doing propaganda for? You'll notice that she never goes inside. She just tells you how great it is. In fact, this exact facility had issues with detainee rape in 2013, according to a report. Good piece by The Intercept here. I'll link it below. Then, to further push the point, Candace says she's going to blow up this narrative with a documentary. I will be posting and doing a documentary on what is actually happening. You Guess what? The, the, yeah, the documentary never got made. Imagine that. And this was an extremely successful PR stunt. That video got over 800,000 views and 39,000 likes. And a year later, we find out that she takes tons of money from the people who own the facility. But it doesn't matter. The damage is already done. They won the news cycle for that week, which is all that matters. 
Candace also did some hardcore propaganda for Geo Group's private prison side on our YouTube channel. She framed it like an investigation, but it's really a 35-minute commercial on how private prisons are such a great thing, even though all the data shows a completely different story. The DOJ had this to say on private prisons. They provide fewer correctional services at a greater security and safety risk to the inmates and staff without producing substantial savings. Not to mention when people are making money locking other people up, it can lead to some really messed up corruption. When you get a second, Google Cash for Kids, a scandal that involved a judge and PA locking up every kid that came in front of him because he had a big stake in a private prison for children. Candace's video has a very like, you know those infomercials that come on at like 3 o'clock in the morning that pretend to be talk shows? It has a very like, a very one of those kind of vibes. I think this guy sums it up best in the comment section. I just left a private prison in Louisiana. Maybe you shouldn't be talking to the warden boys, but the other ones. The ones who get ignored, thrown away. Not dissing on Candace, but the private prisons are BS. We got milky gray powdered milk with cereal because they were too cheap to buy real milk. Soybeans with patties and tomato sauce smeared on it, and they called it meatloaf. Yeah, sounds about right. And don't worry, sir. I'll diss on Candace enough for the both of us. One other quick note on the people Candace grips for. Prager U, who airs Candace's podcast, are funded by the Wilkes Brothers, conservative fracking billionaires who compared homosexuality to bestiality, which is why they pay Candace to say things like this. I'm actually like staunchly conservative when it comes to the trans debate and people say, oh, well, even if a person is trans, you should have the decency and the respect to call them by their preferred pronoun. I don't play that game. And what I always say to people is if you have a mental disorder, that's fine. You know, I don't need to come up to you and tell you that I think you have a mental disorder. That would be rude. Right. But when you have a mental disorder and you're now requiring that I have a mental disorder, right, to, to, to meet your mental disorder, that doesn't work for me, which is to say that if somebody was walking around as a schizophrenic and saying that they were Superman, and then telling me that I was required to treat them like Superman, I wouldn't play the game. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel about trans. I think the, the slope is so slippery, and they find that to be bigotry. No, I don't need to, I'm not going to call you she, I'm not going to call you her, just because you're a grown man and you're wearing a wig and a dress. That, right. yeah, that's literally telling me that I am now required to have a mental disorder because you have one. Hey, what's up, Bob? Actually, I changed it to Ted because Bob's just so plain. Though. So you can call me Ted now. Bro, I'm not playing your game, okay? Just because you have a mental disorder and want to be called Ted doesn't mean I have to have a mental disorder, okay? Get over yourself. Stop being such a snowflake. But it, it's just a name. Whatever. I'm not playing your liberal SJW cuck synth game, okay? Not doing it, you mental disordered having son of a bitch. Candace Owens sort of fell out of the spotlight after Kanye West distanced himself from her because he was clearly being used by her to gain clout for her movement, Flexit. Funny that the lady who said this... Dear celebrities, I'm sorry to be the one to have to break this to you, but we do not care, not in the slightest particle of an imaginary thing, what you think. Latched on to the very first celebrity that agreed with her. She continued to clout chase celebrities and setting members of Congress, trying to grab headlines by challenging them to debates, knowing they would never accept. Meanwhile, turning down actual debate requests from people like Kyle Kalinske, a left-wing commentator who wanted to debate her at Politicon. And most recently, she was doing the flavor of the month, coronavirus is a hoax stuff, and just kind of treading water, while also complaining about George Soros, of course, and Antifa. By the way, how hilarious is it that somebody that takes money from basically every conservative mega-donor, the Wilkes brothers, the Koch brothers, the Mercer family, Foster Freeze, and then complains that George Soros is corrupting the political system with his money. After Ahmaud Arbery was run down and murdered, Candace was quick to push out the video of him walking around a construction site, saying, look at this criminal, he broke into this place, even though he didn't break in, it was just a construction site, he was walking around. Joggers don't wear khakis, this wasn't a race issue. Hitting all the talking points, and that got her trending number one on Twitter. So when George Floyd was murdered, she wasn't going to let a grand opportunity go to waste. She quickly gathered just a little bit of data and then spread the propaganda her donors love. I think it's pretty clear at this point that Candace Owens isn't some truth teller. She's an articulate propaganda pusher, a hired gun for the conservative elite to say what they can't say. But with that said, let's break down some of the points in her George Floyd video. 
For whatever reason, it has become fashionable over the last uh, five or six years for us to turn criminals into heroes overnight. Hey, Candace, you know who's been uplifting criminals? You. Donald Trump has been sued over 3,000 times. Right after he took office, he had to pay out $25 million for his scam university. Just six months ago, he had to pay out $2 million for a charity scam. We, we just didn't want George Floyd to die. But we're uplifting? Uh, when he is put into handcuffs and is put against the wall, a baggie of what looks to be like uh, cocaine or uh, some, it's, it's white, it's a white baggie that he drops onto the floor that you can see in an image. If you look up the clip, the media is refusing to circulate it. You can find it on Twitter. If you, if you use DuckDuckGo and look up um, George Floyd baggie, uh, you can watch the clip yourself with your own eyes. Uh, he had drugs on him at the time of his arrest. This is a thing you see from conservative hacks all the time. The Oh, the media is silencing the clip. They're not circulating the clip. Only get the truth from me. I'm the only truth teller. Go right here so you can see the real truth. You mean the clip that's on NBC's YouTube page that has 19 million views? Where the place where you plucked the clip from? Yeah. You mean that clip? By the way, the police report for Floyd's arrest didn't mention anything about drugs. And the cop leans down right next to whatever fell out of his pocket and doesn't pick it up. We can't tell what it is. Saying it's drugs is just total speculation. Could be literally anything. And they forced their way inside to her home, uh, inside of her home. Um, mind you, this woman is pregnant. At that point, uh, George Floyd took out a gun and pressed it to her stomach. Um, so that lady wasn't pregnant. And the crime is bad. But in Candace Owens' signature style, she has to sprinkle in the little extras just to make it that much worse. And nobody is protesting the death of a great man. What people are protesting is a system that if a 17-year-old girl hadn't taken a video on her phone, all four of these cops would be out on the beat working right now. That is what the protests are about, the system. George Floyd was just the spark. But Candace knows all this. This is just well planned out propaganda misdirection. Period. If you pursue the 911 transcript, you can see the person describing somebody who is out of their mind high, um, and which is what made the person fearful because he tried to, you know, to uh, use a, a, a bill that I guess was a fake bill to purchase something, and then he was outside acting weird, and they, in their police call, said that this person was obviously distorted and on drugs. As usual, Candace is exaggerating to make it seem worse. In the 911 transcript, the guy says George is sitting in a van not outside acting crazy. And he says he's drunk, not high out of his mind. Then after the operator says the cops are on the way, they have a nice little conversation about, how's your day going? Oh, long day, huh? The caller is not fearful at all. A fake bill to purchase something. And so in my opinion, uh, George Floyd was a criminal. <laughs> he was a criminal. And Candace Owens was arrested in 2007 for harassment. Criminal, criminal, criminal. Our biggest problem is us, okay? It's why we don't talk about it when black-on-black -black crime happens. It's why we don't talk about it when 40, 40 black people are killed in one weekend during Memorial Weekend um, in Chicago. We don't want to talk about any of that stuff. We don't want to talk about Baltimore. We don't want to talk about New Jersey. We don't want to talk about any of these places where black people are being slaughtered by other blacks because that would, that would mean that we had to be personally accountable. Ah, uh, yes, the great conservative myth of black-on-black -black crime. As we discussed in the last video, this is nothing more than a completely overused talking point. 84% of white crime is committed by other white people. 87% of Latino crime is committed by other Latino people. It's literally the same for every single race. Poverty is the key factor when it comes to who commits crime. Poor blacks and poor whites commit crime at the same rate, yet blacks are three times more likely to get shot by cops. Also, there are plenty of organizations committed to stopping inner city violence. Mask is one, Mothers Against Senseless Killing, uh, the Anti-Violence Coalition. There, hell, there's literally 50 in just Philadelphia. But that doesn't fit your narrative, so you're not going to talk about it. Look, I could do some long breakdown here at the end, but bottom line, Candace just pushed his propaganda. She's a paid spokesman, and that's all there is to it. And we can't take people like that seriously. So next time you see somebody 
share Candace Owens' video, maybe share this video with them. Because we have to hold people to account when they're not telling the truth. And that's, that's all there is to it. That's going to do it for me, guys. And let me know what you think in the comments section down below. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Driven Progressive. Uh, if you like the content, be sure to like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff. Really, really helps out the channel. Uh, I'm brand new, so like I said, really, really helps. Like, share, subscribe. Thanks a lot, guys. Peace.